Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the authentication process. I have built some functions in R to get our initial tokens and also a function that renews the access token. And now how the process works is we need to get an initial set of tokens that are good for seven days. And within those seven days, we can use that refresh token to renew our access token, which are good for 30 minutes. So if we wanna make requests, we wanna make sure that our access token and refresh token are valid. So again, the refresh token is good for seven days and we can use that token to renew our access token which are good for 30 minutes now if the access token is expired and it falls within those seven days we can always refresh it and this will allow us to make requests via this api now if the refresh token is expired we will have to go through this process online which i'll show you to request a new refresh token so once your app is approved and you have ready for use status you can go ahead and click on view details and what we need from the app is the app key and the secret. So go ahead and copy those values into your R script. So in line 17 and 18 is where you would paste them. Just replace this information with the app key and the secret. And to keep things hidden, I have placed these in an environment called PW. And every time we need to access these, we will do so through the environment. And of course you wanna require these packages here. You also wanna paste your redirect URL. For the most part, it'll be this one or localhost. Now the very first step will be in this chunk. And what this does is it'll use your app key and redirect URL to create a link. And once you run this block, it should print out a URL similar to this one with your own app key and redirect URL. And what you wanna do is copy this link and paste it in your browser. So we'll go ahead and do that. Once you enter that link in your browser, it should take you to this landing page. So what you wanna do is sign in and follow the steps. So we'll go ahead and do that now. At the very end, you should get a site similar to this one that says this site can be reached or something similar. And what you wanna do from here is copy the URL, but do not close the browser. So we'll go ahead and copy the URL and we're gonna paste it in our R markdown. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And this should take us to step number two, where you paste your response URL in here. And the following function is just gonna extract the code needed for us to generate tokens. So it's gonna copy everything after the equal sign all the way to the percentage 40 sign. So it'll take everything in between. It's gonna replace that percentage 40 with an at symbol, and it's gonna assign it into CS code. So go ahead and run this block. All right, after that's assigned, we can go ahead and go to step number three. And I have built a function here where we pass in our app key, the secret, our CS code from the step above, and our redirect URL. And what this function will do is it'll create a post request. We're gonna pass in this URL along with our payload. And we also need to add some headers. Our app key and secret have to be base64 encoded. And hopefully, if everything goes well, we should get a status code of 200. And if that's the case, we're gonna extract the timestamp given to us so that we kind of know when we need to refresh our access token and refresh token. We're gonna extract the content from the page and copy the response with all of our tokens. I'm also gonna add two timestamps, which will let us know when these tokens are expiring. And finally, we're gonna save that as an RDS file so that we can access it later. Otherwise, if we do not get a status code of 200, it'll print out this message. So we'll go ahead and minimize this function. And I'm gonna copy it manually, since if I run this code, it's gonna reassign my PW environment. So I'll go ahead and copy this and run it separately. All right guys, so apparently if you take too long to run through this process up to step three, it appears that the CS code may expire. So just make sure you run this fairly quickly and make sure you don't get an error. If you're able to run this successfully, you should see a variable called resp for response in your environment. So we'll go ahead and click on that to view its contents. If you see this in your working environment, it means that you are able to grab the tokens and you should also see a file in your working environment containing this information. And what we're gonna need from this file is the refresh token and access token. So again, the refresh token, as you see, expires in seven days, whereas the access token we have expires in 30 minutes. Now, since our access token is still valid, we can go ahead and test the API by making a request. So we'll do that in the next step. So in step number four, we're gonna go ahead and verify that everything's working properly. And what we're gonna do is create some symbols for options. We're also gonna include a stock symbol, an index symbol, a futures and forex symbol as well. So if you're interested in grabbing quotes, 
you want to go ahead and copy this function where we just pass in the underlying symbol, the expiration date, the option type, whether it's a call or a put, and the strike. And it's going to build an option symbol in the format that the trader API wants it. And if you're interested in requesting multiple symbols, we can do that with one request. Once we have assigned our symbols, we're going to use paste and we're going to collapse by a comma. And in this case, we're going to use percentage 2C, which represents that. Now to get quotes from this API, we need to pass in our symbols, our fields, and a flag called indicative. And for fields, we can request quote, fundamental, or all. If we just want a simple quote, if we also want to retrieve fundamental data, or if we want to use both, we're just going to request all. So you will need to pass in only one of these. For indicative, you want to pass in true or false. And that's for symbols corresponding to the main one. So they listed here if you're passing an ETF called ABC and indicative is true, it's also going to return a quote for ABC.IV. So depending on what you want to get, you can use some of these fields and it'll go ahead and build the URL, depending on what you pass in, we're going to create a get request, we're going to pass in our access token. And if the page status is 200, we're going to extract the data. Otherwise, it'll print out a message saying that it failed to get the quote. Once you have this function built, you can go ahead and use it. And in this case, we're going to pass in all of our symbols, we want to request everything. And we're going to set this indicative flag to true. So we'll go ahead and run this block and see what it returns. All right, so hopefully you were able to get some data and I'll open up that data frame. So since we are also requesting fundamental data, you see that the size is fairly large, it returned 99 columns, and it was able to get all of our symbols that we passed in. And you can tell by the fourth column that these quotes are in real time. Now that we know this is working properly, in the next block, I'm going to show you guys what we need to do to refresh our 30 minute token. So we have a function for that in the next block in step number five, if 30 minutes have passed, and your access token is expired, and you try to rerun block number four, you should see an error, but we can always use our refresh token token to get a new one. And what this function will do is go through a series of checks working with our RDS file, and it will auto refresh our access token so long as the refresh token is still valid. Otherwise, it'll print out a message if you set this flag to true. If you don't want any messages, and you're just using it in an application, you can always set it to false. So the first thing it'll do is it's going to check if that RDS file exists. And if it does, we're going to go ahead and read it in. And we created two booleans here checking the timestamps within the file and comparing these with our current time. And this will let us know which ones need to refresh. And we'll use these later down in our function. The other outcome is that we don't have a file. So in this case, we're going to set our booleans to null. Now we kind of have a switch statement depending on the case of these two flags. So if we need to get a new access token, but not a new refresher token, then we're going to go ahead and use our refresher token to get a new access token. And the way we do that is by a post request. So just add this URL, the payload, grabbing our current refresh token. And again, we need to encode our app key and secret. Once we make that request, we're going to read in the timestamp so that we know when we need to get a new access token. So long as the status code for the page is 200, it'll go ahead and read the page contents similar to our previous function, we're going to copy the response, update the access token expiration. And for the refresher token, we do not need to update the timestamps on those. What we're going to do instead is just copy that from our tokens. So we're going to replace this with tokens, refresh token expiration as this will stay the same. And then we're going to replace our RDS file so that we have our most up to date values. And we're also going to update the access token in our environment. If the refresh token is still valid, we do not need to update it. And if this ran successful, and you have your print message flag set to true, it'll print out a message saying that it renewed our 30 minute access token and that our file got saved. And if something went wrong in the post request, you'll get a printout along with the error description. Now the next event that can happen is if both of these booleans are or null. In this case, you'll get a printout stating that there's an error that your token file, the RDS file does not exist. Another possible scenario is that the refresh token is expired. So in this case, you'll get a printout stating that the seven day refresh token has expired. If this is the error you're getting, then you have to follow the previous steps to manually generate your initial tokens. So as of now, these expire in seven days. Previously, TD Ameritrade had these expire every 90 days. So I'm not sure if this will change in the future. But for now, just make sure that you refresh the these every seven days. And lastly, the final case that we have is if we do not need to get a refresh token or a new access token. In this case, it'll print out a message stating that both are valid. So no action is required. So let's go ahead and test this. And I'm going to set my print message flag to true to see the type of message that we get. So I'll go ahead and run this block. 
And if you scroll down, we see our message stating that the access token and refresh token are still valid. So nothing happened. So now I'm going to wait until my access token is expired and I'll rerun the block. All right, so the 30 minutes have passed and it looks like my access token is now expired. So let's try and rerun this block and we should hopefully see that we got a new access token. So we'll go ahead and rerun this and view the message. So if we scroll all the way to the bottom here, so now we get a message stating that it renewed our access token and a new file was saved. So what's going to end up happening with the API and how I'm going to use these functions is that in between requests, I'm going to insert this function. So whenever I make an API call, I'm going to check my access token and what that will look like is back in our quotes here before we make a get request, I'm just going to insert that check access token function and we could set our print message to false so we don't want any messages printed out and every time I run this function and I get a new access token it's going to automatically update my access token within the environment so that's my future plan on using these functions with this API so this concludes the video guys I hope this was useful information I'll show you how to place orders and access data in future tutorials I'll leave a link down in the description area to my patreon where you can find the script please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video